And now in business, in a surprise move, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has approved an increase in electricity tariff with effect from September 1, 2020. This comes three months after the tariff hike implementation slated for July 1 was halted by the National Assembly, which prevailed on the distribution companies to shelve the date to the first quarter of 2021 due to the current economic challenges in Nigeria. But a NERC document seen showed that electricity con uh, customers, except those receiving less than 12 hours of supply would have to pay for more rather for electricity starting from the 1st of September 2020. According to the document, the new tariff is based on the hours of electricity supply available to customers. Customers are categorized into maximum demand and non-maximum demand customers as against the previous categories of residential, commercial and industrial customers with different bands A to E depending on the level of supply. And joining us live is uh, Ramon Daka Wonodi, a uh, founder and CEO of uh, ZKJ Energy Partners Limited. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey. All right. Uh, welcome and thanks for joining us once again. Uh, I'm Thank you very much. I'm going to quickly start with asking. The, the, the National Assembly, if you remember, sometime in June had stopped the planned increase in tariff plans till 2021. And now this. What do you think may have changed? Well, there are a few things. Um, you know, the, uh, the executive government had come out with a power sector recovery plan uh, that uh, they had worked with, with the World Bank and some donor agencies. And uh, part of, uh, I'm sure if you remember, about two months ago, the World Bank announced that it had, it had approved $1.5 to support Nigeria's uh, power sector reform. And uh, a key component of that reform is... Uh, is the issues related to tariffs, tariff, uh, tariff cost-reflective tariff, um, uh, service level, uh, then having the disco, you know, uh, put in place a performance uh, improvement plan and, uh, and things like that. So uh, to the extent that these uh, reform objectives are being uh, deferred, uh, that loan could not come into begin to support the, the sector. And again, uh, the government was also looking to cut down the subsidies that have been put in the sector uh, that actually where they been put in support the richer echelons of the society who consume much more and are paying just the same thing about with every other person. So what this means and what this tries to do is to actually make sure that those who receive uh, better and more hours of supply uh, pay something that reflects that while the people who receive less, you know, stay on the same uh, uh, tariff level. So it closes out the, the revenue uh, gap within the industry and then uh, uh, transitions everyone to, you know, a service-based uh, tariff. Uh, would, you, would, you, would you feel that there maybe should have been plans to balance the power supply across the country? Um, because now we have, we're speaking about people who you know, receive less than 12 hours daily and those who receive above 12 hours. Some are going to be paying higher now. Um, uh, do you think that there are plans to balance it out and let everyone be on the same you know, tariff plan and receive equal amounts of energy you know, um, daily? Yeah, I think we, we, we first of all recognize uh, two constraints there. Uh, we do not have enough power uh, to go around everyone. And even though that the, um, the regulator and some people are shy to say it, not everyone can afford to pay the tariff uh, over 24-7 uh, power. Uh, so it, it, is, um, it is the best way to utilize what we have, giving people the uh, most utility for for the service. So there are some people who leave their homes in the morning and never return till the evening. Uh, they do, they could do without 24 hours, uh, 24 hours supply where they have to pay much higher. It is better for them that, you know, they get power in the morning, allow them to get ready, go to work and come back in the evening and have power uh, to the uh, early hours of the morning and it goes. But there are other people who actually can afford uh, power supply and to pay for that for 24 hours or 20 hours upward. And you'll find those people uh, would likely run their generators throughout the period. So it's an equitable way of, you know, letting people, you know, uh, consume power based on utility and also affordability. 
we have to be honest about that. All right. Unfortunately, we can't really, you know, tell, you know, which person decides to be at home in the morning and decides to be at home in the evening. Um, these are all just um, moves that I believe that they have to make uh, to get the best out of our situation. But I want to quickly also ask um, about um, the trust, you know, because one of the statements that was made was that this new tariff plan will lead to an increased hours of power supply. Can customers trust that that will happen? No, I, you know, it's, there is no way there will be a magic one that tomorrow uh, increases the generation or what is, uh, goes to, uh, uh, to the network to, to homes and businesses. So this would, this would not increase the uh, supply to the system. But what it might do is that it might bring about some predictability in, in, uh, in service that makes it much better and easier for people to plan around supply. So if I know that I'm going to get eight hours a day, uh, the first thing is when do the eight hour come? You know, because uh, as you know, uh, like I just pointed out, utility uh, is important. Our utility is letting the power come when someone is wherever he is, he can use it. So if you're in the office, you want it to come during the working hours. And if you're at home, you want it to come at the time that you are at home. And uh, just back to what you said about how would you know who stays at home, I think this is the work that needs to be done. There is something called load profile. So you want to know how uh, consumers in a particular neighborhood, um, what their load profiles are on the average. I, I, because of the way the technology is, unlike GSM, you cannot deliver specific, specific service to each customer. So it has to be in cluster. So when you take the load profile within a cluster, uh, you'll be able to tell how they consume power and when it's most needed for them. So it is possible that you can do that. I wish we had more time to, you know, extend this conversation because there's so much that I wish that I would still be able to ask with regards to this particular point that you just made um, and also maybe on uh, prepaid meters and all that. But we're out of time. And so I'll say a big thank you to you for joining us, Rumu Daka um, Wonodi. Thank you so much for stepping in and uh, looking forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much.